with me to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2. We're still in the Nativity. But something that I believe is for every single person in this place today. Look at the person beside you. This is for you. And me. Chapter 2, verse 1. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen a star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes, that's the ministers of his day, scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said them in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, the Jew Bethlehem and the land of Judah are not the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent to them, he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. You hypocrite, you, you're a liar. You're going to kill the boy. When they heard the king, they departed. And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. They listened to these words. And when they come into the house, not the stable, the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense and myrrh. Then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to her, they departed for their own country another way. Father, will you bless the remainder of this service Will you bless your word? May we leave different. May we go home different because of the service with you. Please answer prayer in Jesus' name. And everybody say it. When they come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary's mother and fell down and worshipped him. It was said of Julius Caesar's Roman army, they came, they saw, they conquered. I would say of these wise men, they came, they saw, and they worshipped him. Notice, they sought him. Where is he? And when they found him, when they saw the young child, they worshipped him. They sought him. They found him. And they fell down and worshipped him. These wise men were certainly respectful toward Mary and Joseph. But totally oblivious to their presence. As they fell down and worshipped him. And I want you to notice the preeminence of him. The preeminence of the young child. The preeminence of Jesus Christ. He was the focus and the fulcrum of their expression of worship. In fact, in 23 verses, the Lord Jesus is referred to 27 times. It's all about Him. Can I hear a praise the Lord? It's all about Him. When they saw Him, they fell down and worshipped him. And then they served him. 
They presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They were transformed by him. They departed to their own country another way. I want you to notice, they came as seekers. Where is he? They became worshippers. They fell down and worshipped him. And they left as servants. They presented to him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Despite the distance, the dangers, the disappointments along the way, nothing was going to deter them from fulfilling their goal. And at the first sight of him, these men fell down and worshipped him. What a beautiful sight to behold. One glimpse of Jesus and they're on their faces on the ground giving reverence, adoration, homage, praise, worship and gifts. Grown men, do you hear me? Grown men, adult men, learned men, intellectual men, reputable men, kingly men are kneeling before this young child. The royalty of earth bowing to the, before the royalty of heaven and worship. What a sight. What a sight. One glimpse of him and they fell down and worship. One, one glimpse of Jesus and these grown men are literally on their faces and worship. That's the effect the Lord has and had on them and it should have on us. Should have on us. All their travelling and journey had been worth it. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's got headphones on. He doesn't even know he's doing them. <laughs> All their traveling and journey had been worth it. All their energy and all their effort had paid off. All their disappointments and distractions and even dangers had not deterred them and had not been in vain. Well, I tell you something. True worshippers are never put off. True worshippers are never deterred by distance or expense or disappointment or hardship. The length of journey makes their quest more meaningful. The cost incurred makes it all worth every penny. The hardships along the way just fuel part of the package. Disappointments just encourage them along the way. Their desire to worship, elation and exaltation is part of the expression of Christ-centered worship. We you hear this? They entered the house and saw the child in the arms of Mary's mother overcome. Have you ever been overcome standing here worshipping? Have you ever been overcome driving your car listening to a Christian song and the tears just flow? You can hardly see in front of you. Overcome. It says they overcome. They kneeled and worshipped him. Then they opened their luggage and presented gifts, gold, frankincense, and were brother and sister. Can I say this to you? One glimpse of him and their worship. When the first string or the first chord is touched, we should be angry in. We should be opening up. Brother and sister, one glimpse of him, and they're doing what comes natural to a Christ-centered worshiper. Oh, brother and sister, anybody excited here? Because I feel I'm, I'm just jumping up here. One glimpse of him, and they're surrendering to him. One glimpse, it's automatic. One glimpse of him, and they can't help themselves. He brought it out of them. He brings worship out of his followers. As we think people said amen to that. Oblivious to who else was there in that house. Oblivious to who was watching. Oblivious to personal pride and self-respect, peer pressure, hostile repercussions, being cool or having it all together. As soon as they saw him, they fell 
down and worship him. Notice it's, it was him. It was all about the young child, not Mary, not Joseph. They didn't even fall down and worship King Herod. No, they worshiped Jesus. Brother and sister, the preeminence of Jesus. The wise man's quest was not just to follow his star. Are you still with me? You're still with me. Give us a wee, just in case I've lost you. The wise man's quest was not just to follow his star, finish their search, find the sun, but to fulfill their destiny. Their quest was fulfilled at the feet of Jesus. They fell down and worshipped him. It wasn't just finding where he was, being in the same place as he was, or even being in his presence. No, but seeing him and falling down before him and worshipping Christ their King. Here's what we thought about that I just wrote down earlier. Their worship didn't begin when they entered the house. It began before they left where they came from. Listen. Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen a star in the east and have come to worship him. Thousands of miles away. They were already planning their worship. What does that mean? Worship starts before you leave the house. Worship starts in your closet. Worship starts on your knees at home. Worship before you leave the house, before you enter the church. Worship begins in the heart before you leave anywhere. It flows in spirit and in truth. Worship comes from the soul. The true worshiper is never is unhindered is undeterred, is uninhibited, I am as undignified. David said that I will become more indignified than this because his wife was laughing at him when he was dancing before the Lord and before the nation. She laughed and she ended up barren for the rest of her life. Why? Because she was making fun of her own king, her husband, because he was dancing before them. We should never make fun of anybody. Keep your words to yourself. Keep your thoughts to yourself. Why? Because God hears them. Entering the house. Please, this for another translation. I love this. Entering the house where the baby and Mary, his mother, were. They threw themselves down. Can you feel that? They threw themselves down before him, worshipping. And then they opened their presents and gave them. Brother and sister, these wise men challenge me, convict me, search me, and inspire me. They challenge and convict me. Am I, am I prepared to unashamedly fall down and worship Jesus? They search me. Is that kind of expressive worship in me? Do I have that dormant in me waiting for a glimpse of him to release such me into such kind of worship? But he all, they also inspire me. If these guys can worship a child, I can worship my king. Yeah. Notice the expression of their worship they fell down. The exuberance of their worship. They fell down and worshipped. The word worship actually means to kiss the hand. The exactness of the worship, they fell down and worshipped him. He alone is to be worshipped, folks. Not Mary, not Joseph. No, just him. The extravagance of his worship, their worship, when they opened their treasures, they presented to him gifts. These wise men understood that they were not coming to Bethlehem to get something, they were coming to give something. They understood the principle of God's word. You never come before a king empty-handed. I see in their worship surrender. 
submission, sacrifice, service, stewardship, and steadfastness. Active worship requires active involvement. And I see them, the ecstasy of their worship, being more of God in a dream, not to go back to her, they returned to their own country a different way. They left different <coughs> last week. They left different. Remember what I said, but I didn't say this. They began as seekers. They became worshippers. And they left as servants. True worship compels you to do something. Compels you to say something. Compels you to give something. True worship is compelling, is constraining, and it's captivating. True worship acknowledges Jesus Christ, exalts Jesus Christ, and glorifies Jesus Christ. How do you measure the depth of someone's worship? Answer, by how far the worshiper is willing to go to worship. By how easy it is for the worshipper to be put off from worship. And by how much the worshipper is willing to sacrifice. In opening their treasures, they presented them gifts. Can I say this to you today? Our security as born again believers is not in saving, it's in giving. It's in giving. The true wealth of a Christian is measured by the value of his or her worship. Don't tell me you love him and remain silent in worship. Don't tell me you love him and then remain expressionless in worship. Don't tell me you love him and then refuse to join his band of worshippers in church. Don't tell me you love him and then come empty handed into his presence. Don't tell me you love him and then refuse to offer him his tithe and his offering and your gifts. Don't tell me you love him and walk out the same way as you walked in silent, expressionless, detached and miserly or miserly. Not like these wise men or any true worshipper. Brother and sister, Herod said, when he secretly called the wise men, he determined from what time the star appeared. And then he encouraged them to go and find the young child and bring word back to him that he may come and worship him too. He was a liar. Don't be a liar. Don't be a false Christian. Don't be a fake believer. Be a true worshiper. If you're going to be a Christian, be a real one. Can I hear an amen out there? Be a real one. False worshippers, listen, have hidden agendas. They've ulterior motives. They've selfish ends. And they've murderous hearts. Here's a false worshipper being exposed by God. Thank God for the wise men because he told them not to go back to the false worshipper. Unspiritual people will try to use your spiritual progress for their own ulterior motives. Don't let them. True worshippers are not accountable to unspiritual people. They're accountable to Almighty God. Amen. Does that make sense? When they opened their treasures, they presented gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Worshippers have open hearts, open mouths, and open hands. Giving is an act of worship. It's part of worship. All offerings were done publicly in the temple. That's why Jesus stood beside the treasury at the temple. He was watching everybody what they were given in, and he saw the little given in two mates. It was nothing compared to the rest. As far as Jesus was concerned, it was all she had. She gave her all. True worship requires your all. 
Look at me. You're all. True worship requires your all. Your all. Your all. Not your 10p, not your pound. It's not to do with money. It's to do with giving of yourself. Can I hear an amen there? They presented giving as an act of worship. Giving is <coughs> the best extravagance we can do when we come into God's house. Be extravagant in our worship. Give Him the glory. They presented to Him gold, a symbol of deity and sovereignty. He was the king. Frankincense, a symbol of purity, the high priest. And myrrh, the symbol of death. He was going to die. The wise men worshipped him personally, openly, expressively, unashamedly, and generously. David said in Psalm 95, Oh come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our God, our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. And they fell down and worshipped him. <clears throat> Maybe you've come as a seeker this morning. Why did you become a worshipper and leave as a servant? Why did you come, become a worshipper and leave? Everyone in the service, look at the person, but I don't fell up with them. Oh, look at somebody else. <laughs> Look at somebody else say, listen to this. Listen to this. Everyone in this service has a part to play. <coughs> Every one of us have an expression to offer and an offering to give. Don't be a bystander. Become a worshiper. Don't be a spectator, become a participator. Don't be a sightseer, become a songster. Don't judge my worship, join me in my worship. It is my duty as a servant of God to encourage you to become a Christ-centered, spirit-filled worshiper of the Lord Jesus Christ. To know him is to love him. To love him is to worship him. And to worship him is to serve him. Why? Because he left glory, was born in poverty, lived in obscurity, ministered in, a, in adversity, died in agony, but rose again in victory and ascended back to glory. And one day, he's coming in majesty. Amen. He's coming. Amen. And he's coming for the people who are redeemed. The redeemed worshipers waiting for his coming. As I close, look at the person saying, I'm glad he's finished. <laughs> As we end 2018, for some it's been difficult. Thinking of George Campbell, he just put one setback after another. Thinking of Billy Plunkett sitting down with Gene. Thinking of others around, Alan Cooper, not here this morning, not well. We could go on, Addie Ross, who would normally be here. Bobby Ferguson. As someone's prayer before we've mentioned them all in prayer Bob and Bell we could go wrong I don't want to leave anybody out as we end 2018 tomorrow night <coughs> end it with us worshiping the Lord as we begin 2019 <coughs> begin it with us worshiping the Lord Determine to devote yourself. This is a challenge. Determine to devote yourself to be a Christ-centered, 
spirit-filled, fully devoted follower of Jesus Christ. Worship Him with your life and your lifestyle. Worship is not just an act, it's a lifestyle. A lifestyle. I could be in the car with John, maybe taking me to the, uh, the, the hospital or wherever, and we're just driving along, and I just say, praise the Lord, love you, Lord. And he's sitting beside me, I don't care, because he knows what I do. I'm worshiping the king. I do it in the house. Come on down to church this morning, Lord. Will you bless the place? Will you bless your people? We'll love you, Lord. Just automatically, comes out of your mouth. Worship him with your life. And with your lifestyle. Listen, why? That others may see your love. And your passion. And your commitment to the one you're worshiping. I love my wife. With your help. <laughs> I love my wife. With everything I have. She's my best friend on this planet. I can see her far at times. <laughs> and she can see me far at times. I love her. And you can't say you love somebody without expressing it. That's right.